My name is Melissa Dawson. I own MDM Floral Design out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, and I service brides in all of North and South Carolina. I've been doing flowers for about 13 years. I started doing flowers at my first wedding in 2001, and I don't recommend doing your own flowers because it leads to a lot more stress it's not what you need to be doing the 24 to 48 hours prior to your wedding. You need to be spoiling yourself. You don't need to be up to your eyeballs and flowers. But I feel like that's what makes me an expert. You know, I have been doing it for 13 years. I'm always learning. And it's something that I love to do. It's something that I'm passionate about. And that's kind of what I feel like, you know, makes me the expert. I am not your traditional run-of-the-mill teleflora florist. I am a custom floral designer and everything that I do for you from the tiniest boutonniere to the largest arrangement is all custom and I take my time. I'm very detail oriented and that's you know that's what makes me different from everybody else is I'm not just an eight dollar an hour worker that's just putting together an arrangement that you could get at the grocery store everything's going to be custom everything's going to be exactly the way you want it and I wouldn't have it any other way I want it exactly the way you want it So the typical process for doing flowers is I'm initially contacted by the client uh, through my website, through telephone, through email, and I do my level best to get back in touch with that client within an hour of them contacting me. I want to be the first one that contacts them back. After I contact them, we really just start game planning. You know, I get all these details about what they want their day to look like, you know, what they envision for their wedding, uh, what are their favorite flowers, what colors they're using, just all these different things that are gonna make their day special. And I work exclusively with the bride. Sometimes we're texting late at night. They're showing me pictures on Pinterest. They're Googling images, sending them to me. And we basically come up with the design that we're gonna execute for the entire event, whether it be rehearsal, dinner, wedding, reception, anything in between. And at that point, uh, I start pricing things, you know, depending on what's in season. That's another way that brides can save money, you know, going with different flowers that are in season, but going with a color palette. And we just um, kind of go from there. You know, once they decide that this is the design that they want to execute, you know, I do an estimate for them, like this is probably what the flowers are going to cost around this time of year they get back with me and say yes or no, let's make these changes, let's go here or there. And then we sign a contract and secure the date and that's all the bride has to worry about from that point forward. I take care of the rest, I show up with the flowers done, the boutonnieres, the corsages, I pin them on everybody, I you know, make sure that the bouquets are hydrated, I transport the flowers. That's another huge, huge thing is making sure that everything gets transported to the venue for the wedding, the venue for the reception, and nothing gets broken or damaged. That's a, that's a huge process. Um, not to mention the two to three days prior to the event when I have to go to the wholesaler, make sure that all the flowers meet my expectations of what they should look like for the event. Um, bring them back to my workspace and you know unpack them and rehydrate them and get them ready to be absolutely beautiful for the event. So it's a very long drawn out process. It's not just a show up and do it, you know, get it done kind of thing. It's actually months in advance that I start planning all this with the bride and coming up with the design. And then generally about 24 to 48 hours before the event, I am literally up to my eyeballs and flowers, um, you know, just about 24 seven to make sure everything gets done and executed for the event and gets transported safely. It really depends on the design. Uh, each one is different. If I have extras that I can throw in, I will. 
If there's going to be leftovers, the client always gets the leftovers because all of the flowers are special ordered. I, I, all I do is custom florals. So all the flowers that I order for your event are yours. And I'm not going to take those flowers and sell them to someone else. I want to use absolutely everything that I ordered for your event. So if there is an opportunity for me to throw in extra flowers for the cake, or for the flower girl, or whatever the case may be, I want you to use all the flowers that we ordered for your event. I want everything to be used when, when the day is done. I don't want to come home to buckets full of <laughs> flowers that didn't get left up, you know, that didn't get used. So there are some extras. Um, I do also give discounts to folks who are using some vendors that I'm used to working with. Being the fact that I am a custom florist, and I go through every, I have like a three page questionnaire that I go over with every single client so that I make sure I don't miss anything. I cover everything from are there restrictions from the venue to are there allergies in your wedding party? I don't want anybody sneezing when I put their boutonniere on, you know, or is your baker who's doing your cake gonna allow me to bring the extra flowers and, and be willing to decorate with that? Or if I have leftover rose petals, are, we, are you gonna be allowed to throw them down the aisle or whatever the case may be. I want to make sure that whatever extras I have left over, you know, the client's benefiting from. My number one tip for stretching a dollar would definitely be to be flexible. A lot of pictures that you see on Pinterest or the internet or advertisements, they were staged for that exact photo. Those flowers may not be in season. They may only grow in a remote area of Australia. If you can be flexible as to colors, if you can be flexible as to flower types that might be more in season, that's really how you're gonna make your dollar work so that we don't have to import flowers from Thailand or Amsterdam or some of these other places um, that really jacks up your costs when you have to have them imported. So if you can be flexible and just say this is the idea that I want, doesn't have to be these exact flowers, I kind of would like it to stay in this color palette, by being flexible that's going to save you a lot of money. You know, when you work with so many beautiful flowers, it's really hard to pick just one favorite. Um, I love how hardy but delicate orchids are. I love how classic roses are, uh, calla lilies. There's just so many great flowers to work with, hydrangeas, especially down in, you know, in the south. We get to work with a lot of beautiful flowers. So I don't know that I necessarily have one favorite. I love the bridal bouquet. That's probably my favorite thing to do because it's, it's the one thing that the bride's gonna, you know, be holding the majority of the time, you know, during her wedding. If it smells wonderful, if it looks wonderful, I would really say that's probably my specialty because I'm so detail-oriented that the bridal bouquet is probably my specialty. As far as, you know, if a bride wants to incorporate Swarovski crystals, if she wants to incorporate a certain shape, if she wants to incorporate remembrances. I, I love putting things in the bride's bouquet for family members who are not gonna be able to be there or people who are special to her but who have passed away you know, prior to the event. I love working those things in. I love you know, working with all the details and I think that's probably my specialty and probably my favorite thing to do. My least favorite thing would definitely have to be artificial flowers. Especially when you get to work with the real thing, you get to see it, you get to smell it, you get to hold it, and then you have something that's just so subpar. Uh, just doesn't have that same feel. You know, your, your day should be special, it should be magical, you should be able, years down the road, to remember what your bouquet smells like and what the flowers were like and, and the way the light glistened off of them, and that doesn't happen with artificial flowers. My funniest story is doing a wedding on the beach, which I love doing weddings at the beach. This particular wedding was in September and there was all kinds of tropical storms coming through. The wind must have been blowing at least 30 miles an hour. 
And as a surprise to the bride, the mother of the bride decided to surprise her with an arbor that was not in the plans, it was not part of the original estimate, but it was just a last minute thing. She decided to surprise her with this arbor. And I thought I was gonna be able to decorate it before they put it up. Mm -mm, they were there, it was up, and, it, and they were gone before I even had a chance um, to decorate it. So here I am, just a couple of hours before the wedding, standing in a beach wheelchair. I'm only about five foot two inches tall and the arbor had to have been about eight foot tall. So I'm standing in a beach wheelchair on the sand with this tropical storm, 30 mile an hour winds coming at me, trying to balance and decorate this arbor with flowers as the wind was coming. It was just, it was not funny then. It's hilarious to me now but the wedding came off without a hitch. As a matter of fact, at the minute that the bride stepped to the edge of the boardwalk, the sun came out and it had been raining for days ahead of time and it was just absolutely perfect. But that's by far probably my funniest story of me looking back at that and saying, man, this girl's crazy standing on a beach wheelchair trying to decorate this arbor with flowers as the wind's just about to topple everything over. So. There's always a funny experience and it always lines up turning out great. I typically like to meet my clients at the venue so that I can get a good feel for what they're envisioning so that we can kind of game plan everything that we want incorporated in their design. Brides can literally contact me just about any way possible with in the technological world that we're living in. You know, my cell phone's always on me. They can contact me via cell phone at 336-407-5208. My website, which is www.mdmfloral.com. My Facebook page is also MDM Floral Design. Instagram, MDM Floral any way that they want to contact me, email mdmfloraldesign at gmail.com. I use a Gmail account because I do email a lot of pictures back and forth with my brides and it allows me to send large files. My biggest tip to a bride to reduce her stress would be to not try to do them yourself. Even though that might be a money saver, it's definitely not a stress saver. This is gonna cause you way more stress in the long run. There's a lot of things that you probably don't know about each individual flower, how they need to be cared for, how they're gonna react when they hit sunlight, how they're gonna react when they hit a certain temperature. Just trust the professional that you hired. Uh, make sure you have everything in writing. Make sure you've covered all of your details weeks in advance, and then you don't have anything to stress about when the day comes. As far as working with Kenneth Light Studios and Sherry Claypool Films, I would definitely recommend them to my brides. Just their professional demeanor, their willingness to help, their ability to walk you through their entire process from start to finish and setting up the expectation for you of what you're going to get in the end is absolutely second to none in the industry and I would highly recommend them. passionate about so um, <laughs> that's how I got started <laughs> throwing flowers everywhere I really love doing flowers it's much harder than it looks let me set that flower down you don't even know you're doing I don't I'm gesturing